If you want to make your footage look cinematic in seconds, stick around because I'm doing an in-depth review and tutorial today on M-Film Look from Motion VFX. Cinematic footage is probably an overused term, but when I use the word cinematic in this context, I'm talking about footage that reminds you of a film or a movie. I'm talking about flares, different aspect ratios, film grain, or anything that makes you feel like this shot could have been from a movie. With that said, let's get into Final Cut Pro. If you head over to your effects browser, you'll see that you've got an M Film Look plugin and a bunch of presets, which we'll get to in a little bit. So let's first just drag and drop this M Film Look plugin onto the clip. The first thing you'll notice is that you have this on-screen control here, which you can switch on and off. And I'll go through all the settings in the inspector window, but let's use this on-screen control first because it's really handy. And this is what makes using M Film Look so quick. So the first thing we've got here is our white balance. So I can go and select something that should be white, like the back of this car. And now we have a nice warm scene. Next up, we have levels. Here I can go ahead and just drop the black slightly if I want, make sure it's nice and bright where the sun is, and I can adjust my gamma if I need to brighten the scene just a little bit. Next, I'll head over to basic adjustments, and here I can adjust the color temperature. Maybe we want to make this a little warmer than it is, and we'd like to saturate it a little bit. Next up, we have a flare. Using the on-screen control, you can move this flare around. Maybe you'd like to put it where the sun is, what I'm going to do is put it just a little bit below the sun and I'm going to click on these four little squares here to change the preset. So as you can see, there are a bunch of different presets you can use here. I'll choose this natural glimmer and hit OK. And then you can go ahead and adjust the intensity if you like, make it brighter. And I'm going to adjust the hue a little bit so that it's slightly more orange and yellow. Somewhere around there. Just a quick look, this is before the flare and this is after the flare. You can also add a LUT by simply clicking on the LUT, clicking on this little preset, and you can simply click between these LUTs to find a look that you want for this shot. I think index is quite cool, it's very intense though, so I'll just drop it down. Let's just introduce it a little bit into the shot so we've got this nice warm kind of look to the shot. So that about sums up the look using the on-screen controls for the shot. Now you can add a few special effects. So this one is Aberration. If I boost the intensity all the way up, you'll see what it does is create an RGB shift on the corners of the frames here. You can go ahead and adjust the size of that Aberration and also how much it feathers out. It's a bit too intense, I'll drop it down. I'm going to add one of every one of these effects to this shot, which is probably overkill, but for the sake of this example, it'll give you a good idea of all the different features that M Film Look has built into this plugin. Next up, we have distortion. So you can go and just add some distortion to the shot. I wouldn't go all the way on this one. I'd probably just boost it a little bit just to create a small amount of distortion. Next, we have lens blur. Now lens blur is pretty cool. You can change the aspect ratio over here. Maybe you'd like to put some focus on the car boost the intensity and you can kind of blur out these edges around the frame here. We'll probably increase the feathering somewhat, lower the intensity, and something like that looks pretty cool. You can also add some film grain. Here you can change the intensity of the grain, adjust the size, and introduce some color noise if that's something that you'd like to do. I like to keep grain to a minimum, so I'll drop the intensity. Something like that looks pretty cool. You can also add a vignette. This is quite harsh. I'll feather this one out quite a bit and I'll drop the intensity just to darken the edges a little bit, drawing a little bit more focus to the center of the frame. Lastly, we can add a letterbox effect. This is really cool because you can simply just drag the letterbox to where you want and when you get to a known preset, it'll snap and you'll see the ratio up on the top. If you'd like to adjust the position of this clip in the letterbox, you can simply click on the clip and drag it up or down. As you can see, with a couple of clicks, we can really transform the shot so let's have a quick look at the before and after of what we've just done. There are also a bunch of different presets which are handy if you want to quickly start building a look. There are 60 different presets to choose from and it's as simple as making sure that your playhead is over the clip in your timeline and then you can go ahead and scrub through these different presets to see which one works for your particular clip. There are so many different looks and I think I'm going to go with Nightlife. Once you've found a preset you like, simply double click on it to add it to your clip. 
Once you've added the preset, you can obviously go and adjust things. So for example, the lens flare, I don't want this to be in the corner over here. So I'm going to adjust the position until I can see the on-screen control. And I'm going to drag this up to the window. Something like there looks cool. And for the letterbox, I'm going to select that and just drag this clip up so we can see her entire face. And there you go. In just a few seconds, we have beautiful cinematic looking footage. Let's dive deeper into M-Film look in the inspector window and talk about some of the additional settings you can change and adjust here. To get started on this example, I'll just start with a preset. We'll try photo play and that already looks pretty cool. Instead of using the on-screen controls this time, let's turn those off and let's look at the parameters that you can change here. Firstly, I'll double click on the top of the inspector window just to expand it and I'm going to hide my effects browser for now. One of the things you can change is your color space. So if you shot in cine style or D-log or S-log or anything like that, you can come in here and choose your color space. For now, I'm going to leave this at Rec 709. I'm quite happy with the white balance and I am going to come make some basic adjustments to the levels and the basic adjustments section. But first, I want to change the LUT in this preset. So I'll head over to the LUT presets and then let's choose something like Thunderbolt, which is nice and orange, nice and warm. I'm quite happy with that. I'll scroll back up to the levels and the basic adjustments and I'm just going to enable the levels and I'm going to adjust the black value here just to get these blacks nice and dark and I'm going to adjust the white just to get some nice contrast in the scene. That looks cool and for the color temp I might just bring this down a little bit so it's still warm but not overly warm. As you can see in the inspector window there are extra parameters like vibrance and sharpness which you don't have on the on-screen controls so if you really want to take control of your look it's good to come into the inspector window because you have access to all of the different parameters. One of the things I'd like to change is this flare. It looks odd to me that it's on the left. I think it would look cool if it was linked to this headlight. So I'm going to come down to the flare presets. Let's just pick one, maybe ethereal sparkle. That looks pretty cool. And I'll hit okay. I'll change the flare position from automatic to manual. And then I'm going to drag it across here and I'm going to place it up on the headlight. What actually might make this easier is if I go back and turn on the on-screen controls because then I can grab this lens flare and put it in the center of this headlight like that. I might change the hue, maybe something kind of like that with a little bit of bluey green in it. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to track this flare to the headlight. So I'm going to set a keyframe on my X and Y position and I'm going to come to the end of my clip and I'm going to adjust that position and move it down into the center of the headlight again. So it won't perfectly track just yet. I'm going to hit Control V to open up my animation properties. And over here, I'm going to just go ahead in the middle of the two keyframes and adjust the position again. I'll keep doing that, adjusting the flare so that it's always in the middle of this headlight. I'll do that a couple of times just to make sure the track works quite well. This is a manual track and it doesn't take too long to do. Something like that looks pretty good. Now the flare also has additional properties that you can change. You can come over to the streak settings section. You can change the color of the streaks. Maybe you want it more saturated. Maybe you want it more green or yellow or anything like that. You can come in and adjust those colors. You can change the smoothness. You can also adjust the flicker amount if you want that flare to flicker. Maybe because he's riding on a dirty road, the flare will flicker a little more. So it will boost that intensity just a bit. Let's have a quick look at the before and after of what we've done so far with this clip. One last thing I'd like to point out with the letterbox section of the M Film Look plugin is that you have a bunch of different presets you can choose from. You can change it to default HD, which is essentially no letterbox. You can change it to any one of these other known presets, or you can go ahead and choose a custom one and just drag the letterbox to where you want it to be. Another thing you can do is have an adjustment layer over a bunch of clips, and then you can drop your preset onto an adjustment layer, which will then affect everything below it. This isn't ideal if you need to have a bunch of different looks across different clips, but if you've edited a sequence together and you want to apply all the same effects, so the same letterbox, the same grain, the same distortion, or anything like that, to all of those clips, applying this effect to an adjustment layer is a really quick and easy way to do it. I'll delete this adjustment layer quickly, and I'll just show you there are a few other presets in here that are really cool. You can recreate a simple VHS effect really easily just by using this VHS preset. 
You can also create a snapshot type effect, or you can create a screen effect, which is similar to a vertical video effect. So there are a bunch of different presets in here, all sorts of different looks, and you can go ahead and customize any of those presets as you like. Motion VFX is running an epic Black Friday promotion this year. You can get 30% off all of their products, and each week, starting this week, they have four surprise products that will go on sale for 50% off. Here are the first four packs on sale for this week, and there are still two more weeks to go. So keep checking back to see if that plugin that you've been waiting for will go on sale. Be sure to check the link down below to get these amazing discounts. At the end of the day, if you want to create cinematic footage with just a few clicks, MFilm Look is the ultimate plugin to help you do that. I'll leave a link down below if you'd like to go ahead and check it out. But that's all for this one. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon, and I'll see you in the next one.